Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I think I'm going to try to keep this recap video to a minimum, keep it brief. Um, I didn't end up doing EMDR today. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I kind of just want to talk about really quickly about finding the right therapy for you. So we ended up just doing talk therapy before. I spoke about that on this channel before. I actually did talk therapy previously and I shared with my therapist now that I just didn't feel it was the right method for me. It felt like homework. I would get worksheets and resources and then I would go home and I would be like have to read all the resources, have to do all the worksheets and I would basically make like a checklist in my mind and finish it as quickly as possible and say I did the work, like I'm doing the work and that's just the way that my brain functions. But today, I mean, gosh, how do I start this? So let's just say like we started talking, the talking continued, it continued, it continued. At some point in my mind, I was thinking, okay, we've been talking for a while. Are we gonna do EMDR therapy today? Which is odd because typically she will ask me like, do you just wanna talk today? Or do you wanna do EMDR? she can normally gauge off of like my just how I'm feeling and, and the words that I'm saying and my emotions like what I should do that day but today we just kept talking we just kept talking we just kept talking and towards the end of it I was telling her this conversation just leaves me feeling exhausted like I'm going to leave the office today and I'm going to feel frustrated that has nothing to do with you. I just feel like like we're going in circles and I say that to say so by the end of it we kind of I talked about how I felt about the talk today and I said I don't feel any better about this. I feel like um I we just talked in circles, blah blah blah. And she said, "Well, you know, do, so do you feel that way when we do EMDR? And I said, no. And the reason is because I am an overthinker. I overthink everything. So when you're talking to me, I want to explain to you, okay, I feel like this, but I understand this and I'm not feeling that. And because of that, I don't want you to think that I'm feeling this. And um, so I know that I should feel this way. It becomes a very like logical like solution driven conversation for me because that's how my brain works have a problem find a solution fix it and she said you don't feel like that when you do EMDR and I said no because with EMDR I'm not thinking about it I'm letting my brain go where it needs to go I'm not trying to you know ask myself why is it going there I'm not trying to figure it out I'm just letting my brain go to the emotion that it wants to go to and I said also you know today I don't feel like anything has been resolved and when I do EMDR I feel like okay in the first cycle I feel angry but then I realize that that's not anger that's resentment and then I realize it's not actually resentment it's hurt and so I have like these realizations throughout the process that I don't have with talk therapy and she said okay so this is good for me because now I know, now I'm seeing this in action. I can't ask an overthinker to overthink. Um, and she goes, but now this makes it clear to me that your brain just works better on working with memory. So I think next week we will start back with EMDR. We will, you know, start with a memory and go from there. And she says, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody, you know, works differently. Your brain just does better with attaching to a memory and kind of breaking down the feelings behind that memory. And um, so that's my point is that I've tried the different therapies. I have been in therapy on and off since I was a child. When I was a child, I did therapy to learn how to like stick up for myself and to just speak up and be more confident, be more comfortable in my emotions. And, you know, I've been in marriage counseling with my husband and, you know, I didn't like that kind of counseling or therapy. So I've done the talk therapy. I've done the different, you know, cognitive behavioral, all that kind of stuff. And the EMDR so far is the one that's making the most sense to my brain. So I just wanted to get on and encourage you that if you haven't felt 
the therapy that feels right to you, just keep trying. Look into different options. Look into the different methods behind the different options. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to understand it because that can actually be detrimental, like trying to understand how it works. But, you know, just kind of have a general idea of how this works and the way that it rewires the brain or the way that it works, you know, helps you work through certain emotions or whatever. You have to be willing to do some of the work. Therapy is not always going to feel good. You're not always going to walk out feeling enlightened. And that was the experience that I had today. And I have to, I have to kind of grapple with that because I knew that I was going to feel that way. And I was honest with her about that. I let her know how I was feeling. And um, it's now I'm here. I'm about an hour away from home. I've been on the road for a little over an hour. And I just realized that it feels like time wasted in a sense. I know it's not. I know that it was something that's going to help us move forward. It's something that helped her get a better insight into the way my brain works so that she can help me better. But it's, you know, that I don't even know what the word for it would be. It's definitely not a limiting belief. It's just my my part of the brain that resorts to the negative or to the disappointed it feels like that felt like a waste of my time i would have rather have spent my time and money doing the emdr than wasting my time and money on talk therapy so it wasn't completely useless you know because we did touch on things that we have not touched on before at all I, you know, I opened up to her about how, you know, I've been trying to do a lot of reflecting and trying to really get down to the bottom of why am I experiencing the things that I am experiencing. And a lot of it really comes down to feeling out of control. So much in my life right now feels very out of control and there's nothing I can do about it. There is no solution or it's, you know, about someone else or about my children. They're at the age where I don't feel like parenting comes natural to me it's a bit more of a struggle it's a bit more um, anxiety ridden so with so much feeling out of control it's causing a lot of my anxiety and depression it's causing a lot of my cycles and she wouldn't have really known that through EMDR I mean she has an idea of it because my limiting belief is that I am not in control um, I am I am powerless so I am not in control and but she knows that from a very surface level you know example or from a very situational thing that I've dealt with whereas now she knows that that's kind of a, an overall overarching theme that some of these traumas that I have experienced how they play into me feeling out of control now and she got to ask really good questions like do you know, do you think there's any part of your life that you feel in control of right now? And I said, no. <laughs> so lots of questions like that, that she got to get, she was able to get a better insight into the way I think and which in turn is going to help her help me better. That's all I want to get on and say today because I did not do EMDR, but it's all a part of the process of finding what works, finding what helps. So I wanted to let you guys know but that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and by the way, while I haven't been uploading like new content here, I am uploading to my music channel pretty regularly. So I'll link that down below. You can go check it out. That's just like music react videos. I enjoy doing them. They feel like a stress reliever. So that's why I'm doing that. But I will see you guys in the next one. In 10 miles, Bye. turn right. the week before last week we ended up doing talk therapy and I hated it and I you know we kind of got to that today I was talking to her about how I left that session feeling really frustrated irritated it was not my thing and she was like you know I realized that I kind of pushed you too far in one direction and you know I can't ask an overthinker to think about this stuff and I was like, you know, yeah, because she, she kind of said, you know, it's up to you at this point if you want to continue with the EMDR or if you want to go the talk therapy route. And I told her, I said, I just feel like I really want to stick with EMDR because I can psychoanalyze anything. You can ask me about a lamp on a table and I can go into a deep dive on that. 
and the thing with EMDR is it's it's purely like emotion based and so I said I really realized you know that every session I would kind of recognize something that I didn't before like I would start with anger and then go to resentment and then go to sadness and then go to loneliness and by the end of it I just felt like I had some kind of realization and I did not feel that this past week and the reason we kind of talked about that is because this week we did another talk session but this week felt much more like doing a deep dive on the actual issues and through talking it was actually beneficial today because we realized that a lot of the things that I'm dealing with a lot of my triggers are not necessarily so specific to one situation and we were, when we were doing our mapping out of you know our sessions it was very much based on this situation happened then this situation happened and this situation happened my phone fell um, but we're gonna tackle each situation so just let me give you an example you know my some EMDR you can go in and be like I just have really bad general anxiety and depression I want to work on that my EMDR was very much like say somebody had been sexually harassed or somebody had grown up with an alcoholic father um, or you know any any like situational trauma that's what we were going in originally with because these situations were kind of the catalyst for all of the stuff I'm dealing with now but through talking we have found that I'm not so much triggered by situations even though those situations don't feel good they hurt things still come up from them you know like today I have to go and confront something that is triggering and I have to do that every week even though that doesn't feel good it's more about the change that happened in my mind when I went through these things and more about how overall my general anxiety has just gotten worse my need for control has gotten worse um, I am very just like set off by patterns that are similar to patterns that happened with my trauma so it's just I don't even know how to explain it other than to say it's more like a broader more complex issue that I'm dealing with more so the change in me and how that's affecting my day-to-day -day and less about this happened this happened and now I'm scared to you know let's say somebody almost drowned when they're a child and now they're scared to go to the beach because the thought of drowning is absolutely debil debilitating to them I'm not debilitated by the things that have happened to me but they played a massively negative effect on like my self-confidence my anxiety like I said my need for control so we are going to go back to EMDR next week maybe I mean I guess we'll see where it takes me but um, we're we're gonna kind of take a new approach and we're gonna deal with you know this big overarching theme instead of this one specific situation that we started working on like three four weeks ago so I just want to share that to say I kind of talked about it a lot in the last video I think but I just kind of want to say you need to feel comfortable with your therapist and my therapist does a really great job of weaving like she moves and pivots whenever she has to she has learned really quickly what questions work for me and what questions don't and that was a lot of what happened at the last appointment was she would ask me a lot of like well why do you think that you feel that way or why do you think you know you can't get over this and I would just say like I don't know if I knew that I wouldn't be here <laughs> like, so it felt very frustrating um, so she's learned what what she can ask me that will open up you know a broader conversation that can get us more to the point she's learned you know my my intricacies and like whenever I tell her stuff that I'm interested in or stuff that I want to do but I'm being held back by fear and anxiety now she knows me so well through that talk therapy that she can say 
you know, one example is photography. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but today we kind of talked about how I love photography. I wanna do more of it, but fear and anxiety is holding me back, which I've never experienced before. And that I realized that so much of it is, you know, small town photographer, you typically become the photographer that photographs, you know, families walking into the um, sunset. And I was like, I have zero desire to do that. It does not appeal to me. I've done the whole newborn photography. It does not appeal to me. I have done the hospital birth. That was exciting. I really enjoyed that. I want to do more editorial, more portrait. I want to do more like intimate, sexy photos with couples just more like really in the life, intimate, real life, laying on the couch. And you know, with that example, she was like, you know, it's really funny that you say that because learning what I'm learning about you, knowing what I know and what you've told me, I would assume that about you. Like it makes total sense to me that that's the type of photography that you would be drawn to. Because we're drawing a lot of parallels too, just, you know, growing up in a small town and being you know, this is not a dig at, at a small town at all because I don't, I don't, um, I don't crap on my small town because I'm very, very grateful. And this is what I've, you know, I've talked about in therapy. I'm so grateful for my kids growing up somewhere where everybody knows everybody. We, you know, we lived in California. We lived in two different places in California. That lifestyle with my kids doesn't appeal to me. I love that I know everybody that they are around every single day, that people that coach them in certain sports are like family because we've all grew up, grown up together. I love that about the small town, but I don't necessarily fit in the small town box. It is very much small town, Southern, like, <laughs> It very much feels like that type of thing that, you know, everybody wears the same thing. Everybody kind of goes down the same path of, you know, graduating high school, going to college, getting married, having kids um, on a certain timeline. Everybody kind of does the same thing. You know, people that I graduated high school with are still every day going to the same restaurant, going to the same bar, like every night, every other night. So it, that's, that's not a dig. That just is kind of what comes from small town living and wow I don't know where I was going with that other than talking about the photography and I just I don't necessarily fit in that box I wear clothing that is very different from what you see in my small town I've literally had people tell me that they watch me every day at school pickup to see what I'm gonna wear because they're so interested in it because one day I'll wear something that's a little more alternative, like ripped sweater, you know, leggings, stockings, whatever. Then the next day I'll wear a white t-shirt and a flower skirt. The next day I'll wear like a little black dress that's super tight to my body and just super form fitting and, and classic. And so I'm just constantly switching it up. Whereas typically you see people wear the same brands, the same kind of style. Um, and so that's just like, she's, it's like knowing all that about me, I guess is what I was saying is that she's like, it makes sense. The more that I learn about you and the more we kind of like put all these different things together, it makes sense. And she's pivoting to adjust to that and to help me in the best way that she can. And I just don't, I've been to some therapists that I don't feel like have that ability. Anyways, I'm getting hot because I turned my air down. The rain has kind of let up a little bit, but... I just want to leave you guys with that. Again, please let me know. Leave a comment if you're interested in hearing more. Maybe nobody wants to see these, and in that case, I'll stop filming them. But let me know. Um, and, you know, thanks as always for watching the journey, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.